Hey, welcome back to the vlog, everybody. My name is Carl Eggers, and today we're going to be talking about custodial accounts. You know, the pros versus the cons. Uh, these were set up decades ago, and the idea was to minimize taxes for the adults, put some money in their kids' names, invest it, and then they could use it for college or something else down the road. Great idea, but there are some problems with that. So first of all, a custodial account, it's either a UGMA or a UTMA, you may have heard of that, Uniform Gift to Minors Act, Uniform Transfer to Minors Act. And the idea is that you, it's a gift to the child. You put it in their name, the parents, the custodian, they actually uh, choose how to invest it. They're the, the, the safeguard, they're the gatekeeper of this money. And it's supposed to be used for the benefit of the child and the benefits are that as it grows it part of it's going to grow uh, tax-free so a certain amount of income up to a certain level is not going to be taxed and then above that's going to be at a child's rate and then above another threshold it's taxed at the parents rate so these were really popular in the 80s and 90s well as tax rates have come down the benefits aren't as great and here's the main issue with these again it is called a uniform gift or a uniform transfer. That means once it's done, you can't take it back as the parent. So what happens is, depending on the state, at age 18 or 21, it's the kid's money, regardless of what they want to do with it. What if they don't want to go to college? Uh, what if they want to buy a Corvette with it? <laughs> what if they want to do anything with it that's not what you intended it for? It's too bad because it is their money at that particular age. So that's the biggest risk to these types of accounts is it's a gift. Once it's given to them, that's it. It's out of your control. So uh, the alternative to that is obviously there are educational IRAs. There are 529 plans that can be used for education. They all have their pros and cons. We're not going to get into the details today. We'll probably do that in a future video. But the easiest thing to do, if you're wanting to avoid taxes, there are some investments you can put this money into. Keep it in your name as the parent or the grandparent and you let it grow and it's going to essentially grow tax deferred because if you invested in something that does not pay a dividend or does not pay interest like a growth stock or a growth stock mutual fund, it's going to continue to grow over time without really costing you a lot of taxes until you sell it down the road, which can be many years from now. And there may be preferential capital gains tax treatment. So there's still some benefits of doing that. But here's the biggest thing. You remain in control. That's the key. Because again, if the child needs the money for college, they're doing what you wanted them to do, you're gonna take this money and use it for college. So you can earmark a certain amount of your portfolio towards college. However, you remain in control. What if they get scholarships? What if they don't really need the money when it comes to college? Now it's still in your name and you can use it for your own retirement. So, and I'm not saying that's a better alternative than using something like a 529, but the UGMAs and UTMAs, uh, to me, some of the negatives are outweighing a lot of the positives that were originally there and, and created. So consider that when you're trying to figure out how much money to give a child for education or just to give them a start for maybe a down payment on a house, once you put that money in one of these accounts, you have lost a lot of control. So think about that the next time you are trying to help your children and uh, what the pros and cons are of that. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and go visit our website, eggerscapital.com. Take care, everybody.